Good job, Neil. Are we getting this by email? Yes. Okay. All right. So there's been a lot of talk about how you have to go through aggregators to get to Netflix or iTunes or what have you, and I am the evil person who can ruin your deal if we receive assets that are not up to spec. So every single asset goes through quality control and mastering. Quality control is where we evaluate each asset and that includes video, audio, time text, which is like closed captions or subtitles and what have you. And every single asset goes through a three-step process. It's actually gonna go through automated software that's going to flag for a whole host of issues and then a human being goes through everything that automated software flagged. And then after that, it actually goes through a full linear QC where a human being sit and watches every single frame of your movie. And so mastering is where we cover all the issues that might have been flagged during QC and we're gonna repair them and make a master file that can go to any platform or be conformed to go to any platform. So those are what those words mean. Now, from our end, 90% of the assets that we receive do not pass QC. There is some issue with them. And this is because digital distribution is very unique for each platform, and they all actually have stricter standards than theatrical movies or broadcast movies. So if you were to, say, have a documentary, and you have enough money, and make a DCP, you can show that in indie theaters and there's not a whole lot of a process to prevent you from going to the Lemley and showing your, and your documentary. But iTunes, Amazon, Netflix, all these platforms are very strict about certain technical things that I'll obviously be going over. But each platform actually has its own internal QC team and they come through every single frame of your video. And so you're not really making, video, like your video might look great to you, but there is someone who's paid to try and find something wrong with it. And those are the people we have to get past to get your movie on these platforms. Now, this is our spec guide, you don't have to write it down. It's more just to make a point later, what every encoding house, not just, or aggregator, not just distributor, they're going to ask for something very similar, which is pretty much in terms of just your feature, your show, an Apple ProRes 422HQ movie, it's just a single movie file, and that's going to come up to my next point in that, I don't know, oh, there we go. Okay, so mastering technicians are not wizards, okay? And many issues that we find during QC actually stem from issues that were caused very early on in the process, either on set during production or during post. And so there's a wedding cake here. Why is there a wedding cake here? So that ProRes file you give us is a lot like an almost finishedly baked wedding cake. And pretty much all we can really do with just that ProRes is just decorate it for how the platform wants it. And we can't fix a lot with just a ProRes. So if, for example, you were making a cake and the salt was mislabeled as sugar and you didn't realize it, and every time the recipe called for sugar, you were adding salt unintentionally, you now have a very salty cake that we just discovered. And there's no saving that cake and no one wants to eat that cake. We have to rebake that cake. And with just a ProRes, we can't, with just this wedding cake, we can't fix it. And so we'd need more. And that kind of goes more to doing, going back into post-production just to fix these things. And that means more money that you weren't really expecting to have to pay and you have a finished DCP. And so that's sort of an issue. So what kind of things are they looking for? Well, when we're talking about documentaries in particular, a lot of documentaries are shot with many different cameras. If you're going out to war, you might have some cheaper consumer cameras that are shooting at a certain frame rate. And then when you're maybe interviewing the politicians back at home, you're shooting with a nicer camera and that camera might be shooting at a different frame rate. Well, every time you have two different frame rates and the same movie, well, your movie can only be one frame rate. So if some of your footage was shot at 29.97 frames per second and your movie is 23.98, all of a sudden you now have dropped frames. And that is something they don't like and that they flag for. And so these are things to sort of keep in mind. Now, every platform is, has a different level of severity about how much they hate dropped frames or repeated frames, which can also happen if you shot at 23.98 and then with one camera and your finished movie is 29.97, then you have a repeated frames issue. 
and a lot of people will shoot like 2997 and then they'll be like oh, this looks too soap opery for me i like a more cinematic look which is 2398 well now you have drop frames and even though it looks better to you it doesn't look better to itunes it doesn't look better to netflix and they will not take your movie it's sort of an issue so this is just sort of like a handy guide of repeated frames where like if you shoot at eight frames per second putting it into a nine frames per second sequence it has to add a frame that's how it works that's how the software works.